Hey everyone, it's Heidi and Fresta. We are Cocktails in Pajamas and we are coming to you an evening later than we typically would. Um, we have been practicing some self-care and um, it's exactly what we needed to do for ourselves. And we'll talk about that as we get into it. So we have been experiencing some Facebook tech issues and so I am going to do my best to figure out, okay, there it is. Let's see if I can, all right. Um, share to my page. Share. Yeah, I can pick up while you're doing that and just say, um, just really honoring the times we're in in our individual lives and being able to be fluid with each other as friends fluid with each other in our nervous systems um, and really understanding of each other too, which I'm finding incredibly valuable like that. I trust you. I know you, you've got yourself. I know you need the space. Um, it's a very poignant piece of our friendship that I just want to lift up. Like, like I got you, I get it, whatever you need, right? Like that feels so safe and nourishing to me. And I know I've done that too, being like, can't do that right now from a place of like my nervous system can't handle. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I'm, um, so, so there's been a lot that's been going on for me in my life recently, in my personal life. And the roller coaster of emotions that I have been on for the last five days, six days, has been pretty intense. And, um, and I, have, I have been very aware of the way that I have been handling my situation to the best of my ability and um, getting a lot of support from friends and loved ones who've been checking in on me every day. And, um, and so I realized Yesterday, I was just like, I don't think I'm ready to go on Facebook Live. And we we started Facebook Live a couple, maybe a month and a half ago, right? This is probably our sixth episode on Facebook Live. And so I wanted to continue that. I was like, well, we could just do Zoom and, and record it and put it on YouTube. And But I was like, I really want to bring myself to the table. Like that's something I've made a kind of a commitment to and a promise to, to myself and to Foresta and to our audience. And so that's, I'm glad that I gave myself 24 hours because it's really what I needed. Um, and I'm gonna call it radical self-care and not apologize for it and just be like, these are my boundaries, this is what I needed. And as Foresta says, you know, knowing that I have my own back and asking for what I want and desire and what is best for me, yeah. Oh my gosh, I'm inspired by that because it feels powerful, it feels healthy, it feels kind, right? To just have a, a certain acceptance of where we are and then from that place speak our truth. And as you said, and then the, the, digger, the deeper dig of courage is like, and then really asking for what we need. Yeah. And for some people that's easy. Some people might be like, courage, what? And for some people that's a real edge stretch. Yeah, yeah. Um, and as you know, one of the things we've been threatening to talk about, <laughs> <laughs> being, being HSPs, highly sensitive people, we have, that's come up many times in our conversations, not only live, but also just in person. Mm -hmm with the two of us. And I feel like that certainly can be part of this conversation, but, you know, um, as a highly sensitive person, I have really come to terms with what's okay with me, what's not okay with me, and, and to find a way to speak up for myself. And I'm getting better at it, meaning I feel like I'm a, I'm a little bit smoother than I was a month ago doing that. And it can still be a little crunchy, mm -hmm. meaning not so smooth and, not, and might come out feel like feeling a little sideways. But I do really work on being as direct as, as I can so that I'm heard 
in a really clear way. And um, again, calling that sat radical self-care, I don't think it to me doesn't feel radical, but I know that so many people in the world don't speak up for themselves and, and are passive aggressive or triangulate or whatever. And I am working really hard to not do that in my life. So when I do some, do, when I want something or I need to ask for something or whatever, I'm like, okay, I'm gonna put on my big girl pants. I'm gonna <laughs> <laughs> pull them up all the way <laughs> and I'm gonna ask for what I need because I can only speak for myself. Right. Yeah, and yeah. I'm, I'm just hearing in that this, this level of self-regard, this level of work that you've done because I can own as a highly sensitive person in a world that doesn't seem highly sensitive, I had to work through a lot of shame in order to like, gosh, am I the only one in the room that thinks the restaurant's too loud? Or am I the only one in this place that thinks it's too smelly or it's, it's too frenetic or right? There was growing up this narrative of like, I seem to be the only one until I met other HSBs. And by that comparison, comparison creates judgment and shame quite often, right? Everyone else seems to be okay with this crazy ass situation. I don't feel okay, but I seem to be the only one. And I had to work through, I guess, self-acceptance. I don't even, that might be the right term yeah. because it's like, you're not like everybody else. That doesn't make you weird or like less than or too much, right? The, the conundrum between not good enough and too much. Um, it took a long time to see it as a, a blessing instead of a curse. And then from there to be like, wow, you know, and I think it's the messages I get, you know, somebody be, it sounded to me like they were like yelling on the phone in an office I worked in. And I was just like, oh my God, my ears feel like they're bleeding. Not only am I not able to do my work, but like I I'm having a physical reaction to it. And they're like, really? That was loud for you? And it's like, motherfucker, yeah, that was loud for me. <laughs> because it's like this, the judgments um, could have been my, my interpretation, but it felt like someone being like, really? Instead of just being like, okay, that's, that's what it's like for you. There wasn't external acceptance. And so it really messed with my self-acceptance for a long time, if that makes sense. Yeah. And people yeah. are like, really? It's too loud? Really? You're smelling something? It's like being the one person that hears like the dog whistle or something. It can be maddening to be that person. Until you find other people who are like, yeah, that bothers me too. And then there's a sense of belonging there. I think meeting other HSPs helped me accept myself as an HSP. Same. Same, yeah. Um, that too muchness. So painful. It is so painful. And especially, it's one thing to hear it or feel it, feel that energetically from someone else, but to put that on myself is even more painful. And so to believe it to put it on myself and to believe it yes and i don't remember if there was like some kind of pinnacle point where i was where i realized that this is simply who i am i don't really really remember the instance but um but i do remember just kind of like oh if he thinks or if she thinks or if they think this is too much but what do I think? Right? Like it was one thing because I was thinking, well, I know that I'm feeling this. I know that this seems too loud to me. It feels too loud to me. Or this sauce is too salty. Or this is too sweet. Or it's too hot. Or what, whatever the situation is, it's simply what's going on with me. And just because no one else is feeling it doesn't mean that it's that I'm too much. And so 
for example, I'm at my mom's right now and we'll talk about the moment. So I'm at my mom's and when these condos were built, there was, uh, I, I would say there was some corner cutting when they were building them. So, oh no. <laughs> yeah. So in this, in this is a really big bedroom that I'm in and the vent is literally in the corner. There's one vent, it's about this big. So I'm on the second floor and then my mom lives on the main floor with her bedroom and the kitchen. And then, and then we have a finished basement and literally the difference in temperature is probably 15 to 20 degrees between the basement and my room and the second floor. So anyway, my sister-in-law was here for a few days and she was across the way, same floor that I'm on. And we have a ceiling fan on and a floor fan like blasting. And she's like, oh my God, I, I don't know. I <laughs> And I was like, I'm literally dripping with sweat. And I'm just like, I know that it can't just, I'm thinking it can't just be me. Like it's humid and it's warm. And when she came, she was just like, it's really fucking hot. <laughs> like, I, I know it's fucking hot. <laughs> so then I turned down the thermostat a little bit, like one or two notches. Mama wasn't having it. She just put it back up because for her, it was too cold. And I just said, look, you have to understand that you're on the main floor and you have two people who are upstairs who are literally sweating, sweating. Anyway, didn't want to have the discussion. I'm just like, okay, we don't have to. And I'm like, okay, I can figure this out. So anyway, there's been a lot, but that's just, that's just one example. Cause I, after I was like, I thought, am I the only one that this is, that is this feeling this uncomfortable, this hot? And I wasn't, and I'm like, okay, so I'm not alone in this. And she even was just like, well, when my, you know, when my brother, when her husband comes next week, she's like, there's no way he's going to be able to stand this. And I'm like, okay, so it's not just me. Right. right. So when we have sort of a community of other people who are sensing, maybe, maybe not high, high SPs, but sensing similar things, there's less of an aloneness. Right. kind of feeling and you're like oh, okay so I'm not the only one but when you're the one that names it it's really vulnerable yeah. and it's really making I, I I I would almost say that I feel exposed on some level I'm like oh maybe I should and I'm a complainer and blah 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 and I'm like if I don't speak up for myself and I'm just miserable I have only me to blame right and you're responsible for you yes that's the piece, right? I think I'm pulling at the piece that's like, even if you are the only one in the room that's feeling it, how do we self-validate in that case, right? It's taken me a long time. I remember having a mentor who I always just with wild eyed awe would look at him because, you know, every, it was like people would be touring, people would be hanging out in hotel rooms, whatever. And he would just come out with no ill will, like total joy and levity and be like, I don't mean to be a dick, but I need to go to sleep. Everyone get out of my room. And, you know, 10, 15, 20 years ago, I'd be like, oh, how does he do that? How does he do that with such a solid backbone, with a twinkle in his eye, with a laugh, you know, not this like where I was at, which was like, oh God, am I gonna risk connection? Are people gonna judge me? Am I gonna be seen as too much? Am I gonna even be ridiculed? for being the complainer, like, right? It's a big burden to bear as a highly sensitive person that may not always be in touch with other similar people. And nowadays, like I even earlier today, he was having a conversation with a friend that went long and it was past my feeding hour, right? And I literally was like, I love you. I appreciate you. It was so great to see you. And my bioforce energy is like dwindling by the minute I got to go eat. And I thought I've arrived, like at least with people I feel safe with. Mm -hmm. I've arrived at just being able to name it without charge, without blame and without like shame. Yeah. Just a place like this is what's going on for me right now. And my needs actually matter to me at least. 
right? Because maybe that's where it's meant to be. Yeah. yeah. Feeling safe is a huge one. Yes. Yeah. Feeling and creating safe. safety. And creating, creating the safety that you need for yourself. Whatever that looks like. That's got to happen because maybe someone else isn't attuned, isn't necessarily knowing what you need. And it's like, well, now how do I create that safety that yeah. I need, that I know I need for me instead of outsourcing yeah. my care, right? A lot of people kind of outsource and that's okay, right? We, we need other people. But if all you're doing is outsourcing. Yeah. There's a problem. Right. right. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I think you really hit it, hit the nail on the head. Yeah. Um, wow. So I have, um, I feel like I have stepped up my, how can I say this? I feel like I've stepped up my um, boundary, whatever that's called. Like I've, I feel like my background has gotten stronger in the last five days. I feel like I have been, I've had many opportunities to exercise my boundaries and I've noticed how I've had to tweak my boundaries in some situations and, um, and really allowing people to have their reactions, whatever they are, and being like, not my problem. Not my problem. Um, so my mother, uh, last week on Thursday, she fell and she lost her balance and she broke three ribs. She fell into her dresser and she broke three ribs. So the neighbor took her to the hospital. She spent three and a half days, two and a half, three and a half days in the ICU. She got out on Saturday. I was here at her place to take care of her for, you know, when she got home. She's a pretty terrible patient because my mom is a doer. She just, she's very independent. She's very self-sufficient. And yet she's got this pain that is excruciating. And so I spent the first, or Saturday, Sunday, I spent the first three and a half days clashing and in contention with her because I was just like, mom, let me, let me do this. Let me take care of you. What do you, you know, that kind of thing. And, and her, you know, and she's like, but I can do this. And I'm like, just because you can do this doesn't mean you should do this. So it's been that kind of thing back and forth. And then yesterday, sometime yesterday, I was just like, I have worked too hard on myself and my relationship with my mother to have it go backwards. I didn't want to resort to where we were or have resentment towards her or any ill feelings. And I was just like, I got to let this go. And yes, it's a risk that she gets hurt again. Yes. But if she insists on it, I'm not going to fight that. Like, it's not my job to fight her on her independence, on her doing what she feels she can do. And with that has been, for me, I'm just like, I feel so much better and I feel lighter. And I, to the point where I felt capable that we could do this Facebook Live. Right. And so that was really helpful. And I was just like, okay, so things are shifting and just the energy in the house today was different. Um, and I realized, I was like, is she doing, is she, and you know, in my head, I'm, I'm asking myself, do I think she's doing too much? Yes, but maybe not as much as I thought she was doing, right? You know. And I also realized that if I change my energy, her energy will, will feel that and it'll change too. Yeah. So um, 
I think we had one minor clash maybe an hour and a half ago and it was over, you know, within 10, 15 minutes. It was just kind of like energetically, it was a little, you know, crunchy for a little bit. But after that, I was like, okay, I think, I think we're going to be okay. Still taking it a day at a time. Sure. Um, and I really miss my home. I miss my, I, I, I miss my, my routine and my, you know, just my home. Um, and I'm not sleeping as well as I would like to be sleeping because I'm just one of these hypervigilant HSPs. And when you're hypervigilant and thinking about, you know, this person that, you know, my mother whom I love, it's hard to really rest, rest well and sleep well, solidly, right? So, um, but I have to say, I'm really pleased with myself um, at how quickly I was able to kind of turn that around to make it work for me. Because I just thought, if I don't, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to choke someone. <laughs> like, this isn't sustainable. I feel murderous. What, yeah. what are we doing here? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, and I'm hearing too in that, like this sanity, <sighs> the sensible, sane, healthy, kind decision, right? Like can't control her. And I can say in my own life, like, you know, and you can't control someone else's side of the street, but how do I control? I can control how I relate to them. Right. And I'm seeing you do that with probably some level of having to let go. Yeah. Consciously, I'm going to say like as a, like a ever present meditation, letting go, letting go, yes. again, letting go again. Yeah. 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 And, um, and I think I shared with you on a text this morning, even when it's challenging, like kind of my, my, my motto, my sort of, um, the words that I'm kind of saying to myself when things are challenging because it's, you know, it's an ongoing challenge. Um, and it's not impossible, Heidi. Like, this is not impossible, right? You saved me with that mantra today. Because <laughs> it can feel impossible until you remind yourself it's not. It, it can, yes, yes. And it does feel a little crazy making. Because when you said sanity, I'm like, yeah, yeah. So from Saturday until yesterday, I I was like, I'm gonna lose. I think I'm gonna lose my mind. I can't continue on this. I can't continue on this journey this way without losing my mind. And so something has to change. And to have a like, thank God for the work that I've done. I am so grateful for the work that I've done on myself because it's been a hell of a journey, but my God, the awareness and the consciousness that I have for my own well-being and myself, Jesus, take the wheel, you know? like Three days is master processing, right? Because yeah. yeah, for the work you've done, you know, the you dig the well before you need the water. Yeah. Kind of, you've done, you've prepaved the work, the energy. I have, yeah. And then I also want to hold the stress responses here, right? For your mom who's injured, she's in a stress response. Right. And she probably deeply values her self-sufficiency and, and has something to prove there. I think a lot of older people do as a value. And then you're coming in with a stress response that mom is injured and your sort of role is to be caretaking, which is a burdensome role. And then you're also not getting your sleep and you're not in your space. And it's like stress response meets stress response. And in three days, there was a course correction. Like, that's pretty epic, oh. right? The 1.0 prototype did not work. Right. You're trying to corral your mom and her defying you. So the 2.0 is like, what's a better way to do this? And then just holding some compassion and tenderness that 
you are, as a family, probably in a stress response because this is a stressor. So this isn't you at your most relaxed. This isn't her at her most relaxed. This is threat levels up, whether the brain knows it's a saber-toothed tiger or just a new situation. Right. If the body's reaction is the same. You know, there's people in my home. I'm not like independent. You're not sleeping. Like there's a, to me, the zoom out of that is important too. Yeah. When people are taking care of people, okay. like it's a lot. And I have on a couple occasions and my father has had injuries and things, you know, been home to help and it could be my nature. I, I can completely own that I'm already a nurturer. So then nurturer on steroids happens, right? Is he warm enough? Did he have enough hydration? Did he have his pills? Did he eat enough? Whatever. Hold on. Siren. Oh, yeah. Yeah. When you're a nurturer and you're, and you would, you want to make sure they have everything they need. Yes. And that they're actually taking the medication and drinking enough water so that their systems are working and yes, and getting the nutrients that they need, like, and the rest, like that's, I mean, I, yeah, I have, like, I have this kind of a litany of questions when I see my mom in the full morning, I don't want to interrupt you, but you had a siren, but yes, these are all the things. Yeah. And something I don't think the person who's injured gets because alongside being in pain and medicated and out of their norm and maybe possibly a little more myopic about their situation, all totally normal. As a caretaker, there is such emotional labor that I've been injured and been taken care of by my mom. And I've been the caretaker to my dad being injured. And I have to say both suck, you know, both suck in their own way. Yeah. And as the patient, I had a little less consciousness and awareness and was medicated and slept a lot and right. Like I wasn't 24 seven the way I was as a caretaker. Yeah. Yeah. But I heard a noise. Is he okay? Is he trying to get down the steps? What's going right? It's, it's like, um, as it relates to the amygdala and like our little button, that's like threat, no threat, right? We just have a little switch in that reptilian side of our brain. It was on threat 24 uh -huh. seven. Uh -huh. because someone I cared about, talk about high stakes, could be under duress, could have something happen to them. There's a little, there's a, I can't even find a word for it. I think it's so deep that there is a kind of responsibility for another life. I don't, oh. I think we underestimate the emotional labor of that. Yeah. And there's a doing, right? Like, I think the two weeks I was home and my dad had an issue. I was in go, 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 octane on steroids level doing. When I came home, I collapsed and cried and yeah. dealt with myself. Mm -hmm. But there was no room for that in a 24 hour cycle of taking care of somebody. Right. So, yeah, I just wanted to name that because I think it's a heavy burden. And caretakers don't normally get, I don't know, a support group or ways to vocalize that while they're in that energy. Right. Yeah. And I have three siblings <laughs> who are literally across the country. They're in the Southwest of the United States and we all have very different personalities and I'm the HSP of the family. And I'm also the not taking any bullshit sibling. And so one of them called me this morning and had all these questions about, so what is the, you know, what is the discharge report say? And, and what do you think? And what are the medication? I'm like, and I'm like, well, I, first of all, I don't have it in front of me. Your wife took a photo, like, took pictures of the whole thing so that, she, you know, I'm like, fine, you know, I am not the reporter. 
And I, I'm like, I, you know, or, or call mom and ask her, but I'm not going to triangulate. Like, I'm just, I'm not either you, I'm not, I'm not the cruise director here. Like my job is to take care of mom and you'll be here next week. If you want to wait till night, like, and he's like, well, can you call the doc? Like he wanted me to do, can you call the doc? Can you? And I'm just like, no, I can't. And um, got a little passive aggressive. And I said, thank you very much. And I hung up the phone. Because I just thought to myself, I don't deserve your passive aggressive attitude. I'm doing the best that I can. I'm freaking exhausted. And <laughs> You, he just, you don't know what I'm dealing with here. And I deal with things differently than you do. And, and that's okay. We all have the ways that we do things, but this is how I'm dealing with handling myself. And these are my boundaries and um, didn't like it. And that's why I was just like, okay, you, you don't have to like it. Goodbye. Um, so you know, when I mentioned earlier, my boundaries, those, I'm like, I really have to, I'm feeling very protective of myself to know that I have, like, not only do I have to take care of my mother, but I also have to take care of my own well-being and my own emotional well-being and my responses and put forth the energy for things that are necessary. Because that kind of shit not necessary and not important to me. Um, gonna, I'm really being careful, like being very diligent and very careful about the, the battles that I choose. And if I can avoid all the battles, I'm gonna avoid all the battles. Um, it, yeah, it's just life's way too precious and way too short for that kind of, that kind of behavior. So, um, I just, I don't give a shit. Like I really, I'm at a point where I'm just like, too bad. And I don't owe you an apology. This is where I am. Yeah, and I'm also yeah. hearing you guarding your energetic expenditure. Like, listen, bro, here are the things on my plate. This cannot be one of them. Like, I love you. If, if that stuff's so important to you, Here's the doctor's number, like whatever, right? Um, I think that's something that gets missed in a family under stress, like everyone's stress responses are out, right? He might be a fact finder and want like all this stuff to feel safe. You're like, hey, and I'm taking care of two and one of them's not getting sleep. So <laughs> I've got to guard my energy and I can't take on more. And I'm also, like you said, not the general you know, cruise captain here. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't put me in that role. That's not, I didn't sign up for that. And like the, the place I'm feeling most excited, although I know it was probably not a very pleasant situation, is letting people be with their challenges. Right, it's, it's something I teach so often. It's like your full expression as, as kind and as truthful as you can be might cause you to risk connection, right? But it's your truth. And can you let the people you love be with their challenges? Do we need to take care of their egos and their nervous systems? I mean, if it's an intimate partnership, yes, there is a bit of a, a team sure. situation. But when it comes to setting healthy boundaries and someone else being pissed, okay, let them be with that challenge. They that's going to help them grow. Not everyone's going to say yes to me and my demands. And maybe an invitation to think like, wow, did I ask too much? Maybe I asked too much there. Yeah. And I'm sorry you had to endure that on top of heat and sleep issues and like the bigger yeah. issues at hand. Thank you. I always yeah. have this myth in my head because I'm an only child, right? That like having siblings helps. 
because yeah. I have no point of reference. So it's like, if something happens in my family, I'm the only one kind of a thing. Um, and I was think, man, like for my partner who has some siblings or anyone, I'm thinking, wow, then everyone tag teams. And clearly that's not the case. So you're helping bust a myth for me that like somehow the kumbaya vibes show up during stress in a family. <laughs> And everyone handles stress differently. And yeah, and so, I mean, I think we touched upon that a little bit, but if you have four different personalities and everyone's stress levels are different, right? Not only the levels are different, but the way they handle stress. Oh boy. Yeah, that can really be challenging. And so, um, I'm, I, you know, I'm, I'm doing my best to take care of me and that's all I can ask of myself. And if you ask for more, that's on you. It's not on me. And if I don't respond or react to that, it's the way it has to be. Um, yeah, I've really, I mean, it's been this, this whole process in the last five or so days has been, I want to say a gift, like of sorts, right? Because I've learned, and I'm talking about my experience with it, not my mom's fall, of course, but my experience with it and just how I've, the way that I have seen things for myself, the way that I have chosen to handle or respond or not respond or whatever. And I'm like, wow, Heidi, you have really, um, the work that I've done in therapy in the many, 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 I feel like eons of therapy that I've done in my life. I'm like, wow, this is, here they are showing up when things are really, really hard. And I've been through hard situations in my life, but this is a different, this is a different ball game, if you will. And um, yeah, I'm really, I'm proud of myself for uh, for handling it in the way that I've handled it. Yeah, yeah. And then to be witnessed, you know, and validated by my sister-in-law who is a therapist herself and works with many different types of people from many different cultures. And, um, and she's like, it's, she's like, I, you know, I'm, I appreciate that you've done the work that you've done on yourself and it shows and I'm like thank you and there was a lot more that she said but that's all I'm gonna share about it right now but it's I was like thank you for saying that because when 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 you're the only one in the family who's done such deep work and really done work to heal the wounds of ancestries and whatnot whew, it's it's challenging to be around those who haven't. Yes. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Because that's the old dynamic. And then there's an up leveling and then it's kind of like being put back into that yeah. pool, right? Yeah. And still holding yourself at the at the level you've chosen to not moralistically higher or lower, but just like a different frequency. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, that feels big. Every time you say in the last five days, I feel like the the movement, the energetic shifts you've made it would be like months worth. So my brain cramps every time you say what I've learned in the last five days. And I'm like, five days? Like you've you've moved mountains like in this time. Oh. You, and I'm not gonna say easefully because I don't think that's your experience, but from my lens as a friend watching going, wow, you made some really cool decisions from your executive center pretty quickly as you saw that it wasn't working. Yeah, I, I thank you. Thank you for, uh, for um, yeah, for saying that and recognizing it. And it doesn't feel like five days, <laughs> but I have to keep saying five, cause I'm just like, cause it literally feels like I've been here for five weeks. Right. And the riches and the wisdom and what you're sharing feels like 
not that there has to be time, but it feels like the kind of thing that would take time to gather. And yet you, like you said, pre-paved with other time you've practiced. Sure. Yeah. Oh my gosh. So wild, like life. And I feel it too. I feel it in my relationship, right? I was sharing with you just sort of this place of healing is happening, you know, wounding happens in relationship. So it goes to say that like healing happens in relationship. And I know in my history with my partner, a lot of my healing was done in what looked like blaming him and projecting a lot of my historical stuff onto him, right? And it's like, I know I did that. It felt real at the time. It felt like he was the cause. It felt like um, if only he would behave a certain way, I wouldn't feel these things. And the cosmic joke is you partner with someone who's gonna help you heal the old stuff so you can become more, not less of who you are, right? That's my belief about relationships, um, particularly relationships that are growth-minded and transformational, that like, there's no way you can hold the fullness of love with all this emotional debris. So of course that person's gonna kick up the dirt in your heart so that you can clear it out and make room for that kind of love. And I say that because my spidey senses feel like that's now happening for him, right? And in in the modalities he's using in the ways that he is choosing to work with his emotional debris um there's a little bit of i'm going to say projection in my opinion motorcycle <laughs> happening mm -hmm. and i think in past relationships when this would happen when i wasn't onto this being a totally natural dynamic i bolt or I fight, right? Something feels very different and mature this time, mm. which is like, you did this for me. I can do this for you. Now, mind you, it's still boundary, right? Like, I'm not going to be someone, as you as you named, like, I'm not going to be someone's punching bag. I'm not going to take any sort of um, energetic abuse and... I can zoom out and go, oh, you're healing. You're doing the work. This is what I've asked for you to do. And it's going to be unpleasant and it's going to be a little messy. And wow, do I feel solid and stable and secure enough to be a, part, a compassionate partner through this. Can't say that's always true in the middle of a conflict, but on the whole, it's like, okay. Yeah, I did. I this was how I exorcised, you know, some of my stuff. Here are the things you've never gotten to say. You know, for me, it was like, here are the doors I never had permission to slam. Right? Here are the, the distressed, hurt words I never got to say. And it was hugely reparative to have someone who just was like, mm -hmm. seeing you where you're at, not going to respond to it, not going to like make it worse, just going to be a steady, loving place, an anchor while you're in this storm. It feels mature and it also feels, I'm going to say mutual. Like that we do that for each other it's not you know just one person like doing that and the other person having to have this sort of unmutual imbalanced situation what's my point in all that oh yeah i don't think i've ever been this mature in relationship i love that yeah, it's kind of like, oh, this this feels different. This feels solid. This feels like oh. I've got me and I can be with you and I can accept whatever is showing up with you. I might not totally love it. Like I might not, you know, 
have like one of that, like mark that on the calendar as like a great thing. And my own secure attachment style is showing up. Okay. Just being like, okay, I got you. You're struggling. This has nothing to do with me. You know, I might be the pokey stick, right? I might be the the trigger. And of course, in depth psychology, it's like 10% is the moment, 90% is historical. So it's like, okay, yeah, I probably started this, but I'm not the sole reason for this. So in a way, I guess I'm naming it because it's me being boundaried with where the responsibility is. Mm -hmm. Right? I think in younger years, if a partner was upset with me, I took 100%, if not 110% responsibility. Mm -hmm. Instead of going, yeah, I could see how I helped co-create this. 90% of this is your side of the street. And 10% is me wanting to be a solid partner and help you through and not do the things that poke the tender places, right? Like that I can, that I can do. But letting go that I can't do the work for somebody, nor can I go over with my little broom and like brush their side of the street. And it's kind of freeing. Oof, yeah. I mean, for all the ways in which I wanted to do that and was determined to do that with partners, like, hey, let me come over there and like clean your side so you could love me better, so we could connect, so you could be available and open hearted. It's like, yeah, that's that's not for you to do. There's no fixing and rescuing and um and then what I said to you, the humility of like and it's up to that person whether they're going to do the work or not. And that has that makes me feel like I'm free falling because it's like really truly not within my control. Yeah. Is that land like have you oh. ever experienced that where you're like, I, oh, I can't do anything about that. That's all you boo. Yeah, in um, in my last relationship, my partner said to me twice. The first time I didn't, I didn't hear it in the way I needed to hear it. And what he said was, he actually he said it in the form of a question, which was, "What if I don't want to?" Meaning, what if I don't want to do the work? And then on the evening that we broke up, he said it again. And he actually didn't ask me. He said, I don't want to do the work. Oh. And I was just like, Brutal. okay. All right. And... And I, I mean, I knew exactly what that meant. And I thought, oh my God, I've been, I've been working so hard on myself and, and also trying to do your work, which doesn't work. It just, it's not possible. No. And, and what I want to say to anyone who is listening to this, don't ever think that you can or that it's your job to do anyone's work, except your own. Um, don't think in your wildest imagination that you can fix anyone except yourself. Um, Cause you can't. And it's really tantalizing to try well, because it's sort of a help I'm me. Queen of, help. I'm queen of that castle. Well, and I'm just owning the drive, which is like, help me help you help me. Right? Just knowing that that's the drive. It's like, if I can help rescue and fix you, you will be able to love me and connect with me better. And it's often coming that control that for me, the drive to control it is so that I can stay in connection with them. Right? I had my former partner who I love to the moon and back, like, like nobody's business, said to me, I'd rather be alone and open that closet full of skeletons. Oof. 
and I can look at it now. Yeah, it was brutal in the moment because it's like the love, the love, right? But I can look back now and hear I'm not growth minded. We don't have that value. Right? I'm being very sterile about it now, but it's true. Like someone who is growth minded, like transformationally minded, is going to want to grow. You know, and one of the things, like Richard said, when we do those cards, you know, one of the things is like, what's most surprising about our relationship? It's like one of the questions. And he was like, how fresh it is because we're constantly growing and changing and ever unfolding. Like we're not the same people we were a year ago or two years ago or six years ago. So like the surprise for him was like a relationship continuing to like keep both of us on our toes versus become automated and stagnant and predictable. It's like, there's no, like, I am not the same person I was three years ago. Like, he's not dating the same person. He's not going to marry the same person. Like, there's something really fun and fresh and juicy about that, right? And that's growth-minded partnership. So, yeah, I think that's a big one. If I was ever to go on a first date, I'd be like, all right, so how do you handle your shadows? And how do you handle conflict? And how growth-minded are you? I don't care if you like jazz yeah. and uh, tiramisu. Like the, the first date questions need to be amended yeah. to like where are you at energetically. Yeah. That's what I would tell people if they were going on a first date. It's like you might as well, you have nothing to lose on a first, second, and third date. Ask the hard questions. Yeah. Don't wait till you're 12 dates in and emotionally invested to find out if this person wants what you want. You know? <laughs> and level two of the hard questions is, how do you handle such and such a situation? Like, how do you handle, how, you know, how, you know, in a conflict, where do you, how do you show up in a conflict? How do you handle conflict? Yeah, like what would your ex say was the hardest thing about you to deal with, right? Oof. Or, or your mom or your sister, like whoever knows you well is gonna know your shadows, mm -hmm. you know? What would they say was like the hardest thing to deal with as, their, as your partner? I'm gonna write those questions, damn it. I want people to have juicy first dates where they're like, show me your cards. I'm not trying to wait. Yeah. Six months in to figure out, you know, right. after the infatuation, after the chemicals, after the courtship to be like, okay, who's this person? Yeah. Yeah. And I would love to invite people to actually be honest there instead of performative. And yeah. I know that's hard to do on a, those first few days. Yeah. Right. I'm like, yeah, I suck at empathy during conflict. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. And I'm working on it. Yeah. Right. Versus like, oh, I'm just like so wonderful. I don't know. It's like yeah. they're going to find out. Right. 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 And yeah, yeah, they will find out. And like you said, I would rather find out two and a half weeks in as opposed to two and a half months in. Yeah. Yeah. I remember when Richard and I got back together, we had this dinner date and I was like, oh, fuck, I have to ask the hard questions because I was like, he's, he's Italian Catholic. What if he wants 12 kids? Like, I don't want any kids, you know, like, and it was like, it was a very shaky, vulnerable conversation because it, it could mean not moving forward. What if he doesn't want marriage and what if like, he wants a bunch of kids and what if he doesn't want to travel and like, what if us both following our spiritual paths isn't okay? Like, all of that. We put our cards on the table, and it was like, oh, thank God. Okay. Like, at least in terms of compass, we're oriented the same. Right? And some of that was, like, marriage, um, adventuring, and then supporting each other wherever our spiritual call goes. Right? If six years from now he decides he wants to be a minister, I'm just making it up. I was like, what? 
But being able to be like, I got you, I support whatever your heart's desires are, right? Um, from a place of, I support your growth. Yeah. And whatever that looks like, because I don't expect you to be the same in five years, 10 years, 12 yeah. years. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh, let's make juicy date first date questions that, that people will be afraid to ask, but I think it'd be fun. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You might need a cocktail to ask these questions. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. Right? You get a little pack. It'll be our own chat pack. Our own cocktails and pajamas chat pack. Yes. I think we could we could rock those questions in a way that I feels like, yeah. an like an invitation and not like judgy. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, I like this idea. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's so great. Right? Yeah. I mean, if we're modeling this kind of authentic relating, we might as well make merch. Absolutely. <laughs> it helps people. <laughs> yes. Do the same. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm also thinking, you know, um, <laughs> you know, to be sitting across the table from it from a date, right? And then I'm also like thinking at a family dinner. It could be an app. So no one has to walk around with a deck of cards. Right. Right. <laughs> But it could be like, I'm with family, or I'm on a first date, or I'm with a long term yeah. partner. Yeah, different I'm categories. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, I likey, likey. Me too. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> have, have we been, how long have we been on? Probably near our hour ish. Are our we? time was different, right? So I'm like, I think we're around that time. Our time was a little bit different. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Did you have anything else you wanted to add before we? I'm personally fascinated, like endlessly fascinated with being human. Like this whole being human thing. It's like such a wild, crazy, beautiful adventure. And we've talked nearly every week, if not twice a week, and it's just mind boggling how much continues to unfold. Um, <laughs> <That's laughs> you hear the motorcycle? <laughs> you see my face, I'm like, ah, oh, it's a motorcycle. <laughs> right. So I think that's it. That's where my love is at. That's where sometimes my sorrow is at that sometimes where my curiosity is at like wow not just being me but what i'm assuming is being human for many people is just like so freaking vast and complex and nuanced yeah yeah what about you is there anything else you'd like to be seen in um hmm Yeah, um, I'm, I'm really grateful to be alive and to be feeling as well as I'm feeling. And that's been a road, right? Um, and I'm appreciating the humanity and how I have shown up for myself how my people have shown up for me in support and how I have, I feel like my backbone has another vertebrae or something like another, you know, and I'm like, Oh, I'm sitting up a little bit taller and yeah. Yay. Heidi, you, you did that. You're doing hard things and it's okay. Like, and I'm still, I'm, I'm still alive. I'm still feeling okay that I've done, something really hard and stood up for myself. And 
And I want to say modeling for other people, but I'm really modeling for me because the more that I do it, the easier it becomes. And I'm like, okay, so the next time I have to face a hurdle, I'll have a little bit more courage to, to, to face that hurdle and, and on and on and on. Um, so yeah, because um, humans, we're, we are, we are, we're sensitive, we're complex, we are feeling, we are deep, we are, we're all of that, you know? And, and so are the species that live with us, you know? Um, and I just want to comment that sunset or that sunrise. Oh my God. Right. I just oh got up to go like have my, you know, go to the bathroom. And I was like, I, Richard was like, how'd you take this picture? I was like, I was still like sleepy, but I was like, I gotta get a picture before I go back. To, I went back to bed because it was like 5.55 or 6, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. yeah. Just mind blowing. And I just, I, yeah, that is, that is spirit's paintbrush, right? Like what an incredible thing. Yeah. I, 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 I could not get over those colors. I just, I just really feeling grateful that you posted it and that I got to see it. And I was like, wow, she saw this in person. What a gift. Thank you so much. Yeah. One of my wishes with my nature photography is just to elicit that same level of awe, joy, um, reverence for nature that I feel just by capturing it and then sharing it. Like that feels like my little drop in the bucket of, you know, honoring Mama Gaia. So yeah, thank you. Yeah. Do we want a chat pack and or a the and? Um, do you want to do with the and? Do you have your deck? Happy to, yeah. Awesome. Okay. Let's see. I always feel like I'm going into Uno cards because, like, this is how big that deck was when you got yeah. the yeah. full Uno deck. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to let you. Tell me when to stop. When? Yeah, okay. Hmm. Okay, I'm gonna skip this one because it says, how has your physical attraction to me changed over time? <laughs> Which we could answer, but I feel like there might be something better. Okay, I would agree. We have our we have our veto rights given that these are for yes long term partnerships. Okay, here we go. Mm, no. Okay, this one is. Hmm, I like this one. What's one moment that you would go back to do, go back to and do differently if you could? What is the one moment that you could go back to and do differently if you could? If any. Ah, uh, um, I don't have a lot of regret in my life. Um, and I say that not from a place of ego, but really from a place of truth yeah. and authenticity because, and I'm like, as I'm, as I'm, you know, responding to this question, I'm really checking in with myself and yeah, I'm really checking in and being like, okay, so where are we with this, Heidi? So I'm aware that without, without my experiences, bad, good, and different, whatever I want to call them, and I don't want to judge them, but right, I've learned something from everything. 
and so I mean I have said to myself oh you know I wish I wouldn't have said that or whatever and in that same instance I know that I will never do that again so without that experience I don't know that I would be able to say on the other side of it I'm Without doing it, I would never say I won't ever do it again, or I want to do it differently. Does, does that make sense? A hundred percent, because it shaped who you are. It completely has shaped who I am. And yes, there are some experiences that have been really painful and really challenging. And and I thought, oh my God, will I ever get out of this? Or will this ever, ch you know, all of that, right? But at the end of the day, without those experiences, again, I would not be the woman that I am, the person that I am, the human, the being that I am. So, um, and I really just wanna be careful and make sure that I'm not bypassing anything, right? Like in all, in complete honesty, I wanna, I just wanna make sure I'm not bypassing. And I don't think I am because I'm like, yeah. I mean, yeah, I, I don't think there are any, what about you? I think I'm living in the and, which is like, which is funny because that's what these are called, um, is what you're saying, which is like, all of this has shaped me into who I've become and I love who I've become. So like, how could I throw any of it away with, with the risk of then losing who I've become, right? And if I look back, I think of I think when I was like 15, 16, 17, I started working and getting paid pretty well and not totally being in touch that I could have like maybe made life easier for my parents by chipping in, right? Just kind of like blowing it on Kennedy the Center, Phantom of the Opera and Italian, you know, dinners in Georgetown and concerts, you know, whatever. Um, so there's a part of me, I, 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 I feel that tinge of regret that's like, oh man, I could have actually helped. And I just didn't have the awareness at that age yeah. that like I could have chipped in, I could have helped, I could have lowered stress um, by, by doing that. And then there was another one that kind of came and went, but it felt pertinent in that way. Uh, it went away, I guess. I can't really recall it. Um, but that was one that it was like, oh, you know, if I had that to do over again, I probably would have been a little bit more aware of like how I could have been a beneficial presence uh -huh. through my work in helping my family. Uh -huh. um, and that particular, again, I think all our feelings have our back and that particular regret has me going, well, at this point, I could plan a Mediterranean cruise or a Hawaii trip and do that, right? There, there's still redemption, if, if that's even the right word, from our regrets. Uh -huh. like, it still built my character to go, like, when I can, I will. Like, when I can again, I will. And that actually feels sweeter. Hmm. The lessons being learned and then act like acted upon, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the one that sticks out. And then it's also like, how could you ever take any piece of your divine recipe out? Cause it'll change the batter. It'll change the yeah. batter. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Thank you, friend. Thank you, friends. I love you so much. Thanks for bringing it five days in. Yeah. And 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 trusting in some such sorry so much. It's such motorcycle weather today. Um, trusting yourself, trusting me, and trusting us. I can feel that. Welcome. Yeah. All right, everyone, thank you for watching this evening. And this was episode, I think, 39.
of Cocktails and Pajamas. And um, yeah, we, we, we are thrilled to be with you on Facebook Live and um, send a like or something, let us know you're here. If you have a question, if you have a suggestion for our chat pack box, put it in the comments. We would love to um, consider it and uh, we will see you next week.